The question shouldn't be what you should invest in. The question should be how can you develop more cash flow? Let me paint you a picture. You work nine to five or you have a side hustle, you save some money. Uh, let's say you save 10K and you decide to invest that in something. You have a couple of options. You might choose to invest it into a startup. Ain't wrong answer, that's crazy. That's like 99% chance of failure. You might invest into real estate. That's probably way too little, specifically if you're living in a major city. You need a couple of hundred thousand dollars to start. So your left or option three, what most people take, you put it to the market. You might go to something safe like a Vanguard REIT or some type of index fund. And you might make a couple of percentage return depending on how you invest it. You might have tax um, tax benefits or you might just have no tax. It all depends on where you are and how you do it. Okay, so two things happen over here. Number one, you now have locked capital within the stock market. Nothing wrong with that. It's still locked, right? You take it out, you're not really making anything. And depending on your tax situation, you might get dinged. Number two is let's say the stock market decides to go south like we saw before COVID or we've seen many times, the cyclical. And now you've lost that 10K or maybe you want to recoup your losses. You lost 50%, you have 5K left. And you take your money back out. Where's What happens now? You don't have any more money. You've saved that 10K. See, the question shouldn't be what you should invest in. The number one fucking question should be how can you get more cash flow? That's the most important thing. More cash flow gives you more opportunity to invest with higher risk because it gives you better asymmetrical opportunities to invest. I want to repeat that again. More cash flow gives you more asymmetrical opportunity and higher risk profile to invest. This is why I can't stress enough. It's not about saving. It's about getting more cash flow. Investing one-off isn't investing. Investing should be a cash generating system that gets you multiple forms of cash flow from different types of verticals. And so what I want to talk about today, simple things. I made a video before about multiple streams of income and it's no different. It all depends on your strengths, it depends on where you live, it depends on the situation in your life. But the bottom fucking line is if you are relying on a nine and five job, which is nothing wrong, we need to have fuck, totally fucking like we need to, we need the economy to work. But if you're relying on your nine to five job and you're planning to just save a little bit off of that on a monthly basis to invest in something, that's not investing my mind. That's actually a big risk for me. I'd rather you take that money and invest in yourself. More courses, more workshop, public speaking, better communication, understanding better sales. Invest that money. That 10K is not going to be a thousand X return for you. That 10K in, in the stock market is going to yield you 4%. 4%. You do the math how long it takes you to double that up. Okay? So for me, it's like you need to figure out, okay, I make 5K a month right now, let's say after taxes. What can I do right now currently to help me get more cash flow on the side? It's not a lot. See, people have a misconception that they need a lot. They don't. It's not making another 5K. If you can make 200 here, 300 here, 400 here, give or take, This these add up. And these give this gives you the flexibility. If one dries out, you have something else to rely on. If you look at all these successful quote unquote investors around the world, they always have dry powder, technical term, dry powder coming in that gives them that capital to deploy into better opportunities. Let's say you invested into the S&P or the Dow, the 10K. Then all of a sudden you realize there might be a better option out there. It's not that quick to just take it out, depending on your tax situation, depending on if you have it locked up. You don't have any dry capital to start moving around or allocating your capital to better opportunities for returns. So you got to figure out how you can start getting more cash flow, whether it's affiliate marketing, do a side hustle, whether it's doing some sales and commission for a business on the side, consulting. If you have a skill that you've developed over the years or you worked in a company, at whatever type of uh, title you had in the company, CMO, CFO, CFO CTO, etc., etc. There's people that's willing to pay you for that information. Start consulting on the side, uh, a little bit on the side. Maybe you're into the game of arbitrage. Gary vee has been talking about this lately with uh, cards, you know, like collector cards, Pokemon cards, sports cards, uh, magic cards. Um, I, I mentioned a story before about uh, my friend's mother who gets old furniture. She fixes it up and puts it on Etsy. That's another form of cash flow on the side. Maybe you want to start a small e-commerce business on the side, some white labeling stuff, but you got to fucking figure out 
get you have, you have to fucking figure out where the cash flow is coming from. You cannot rely on one stream of income and then say, hey, where do I invest my hard earned fucking savings? You don't. That savings should go to you. That savings should be reinvested. Because at the end of the day, there's no better there's no better opportunity than reinvesting in yourself. If you got 10K, I would I would hire people as mentors. Um, I would get courses, I would get good at communicating, I would work on sales, or I'll take that 10K and maybe buy some inventory for my e-commerce business, open up a Shopify store. Here, here's something. You, you have 10K, I would, I would get 5K for inventory, I would load up on inventory, I will take 5K for marketing and start marketing your brand, start actually building a side business out there. Or maybe you've been itching to do some YouTube stuff and maybe you want to get into affiliate marketing and with YouTube, driving traffic that way. You know, I started off with this long time ago. Start doing this, start making videos, start getting into SEO, start understanding how does this ecosystem work? But you gotta start figuring out right now, how can I get more cash flow? You relying on the nine and five for the salary, that's not gonna work out at all. This is the schmuck thinking. This is how they want you to think, it's schmuck thinking. They, The whole idea of trading hours for dollars and then saving as long as you can and then deploy that into the market, that's schmuck thinking. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm not here to tell you what to do or what not to do. I'm just telling you in my personal experience and if you study people who are successful in that world of finance, that's schmuck thinking. Everybody, every successful person, entrepreneur and individual that I personally know have multiple. They have at least five streams of income. You need to figure this out. This is why I can't. I, it always irritates me when I hear this question of what I should invest in. Completely wrong question. So let's kind of recap this. You need to figure out your current situation in your life. What's your overhead? Um, what's your skills? What's your weaknesses? Where you live, that matters. And then you got to make a list of things of, hey, what can I do based on my situation in my life? How to create more cash flow? Then you make a list on the side. Okay, affiliate marketing, commission sales, starting a small e-commerce company, uh, arbitrage, so buying X product, selling product for Y, quick flips, whether it's like Kijiji, Craigslist, Etsy, eBay, etc. cetera. Um, you gotta make this list. You gotta make this list up and, and you gotta figure out, okay, if I'm working nine to five and then I got a family and kids afterwards that takes me till 10 p.m., that gives me now two to four hours to focus on my side cash flow and then rinse and repeat. You got to figure out, okay, this works, that doesn't work, this works, that doesn't work and go out there and start taking risk. You will fail. That's the, that's the truth. That's the reality. But who gives a fuck? The experience that you gain, the knowledge that you gain, the wisdom. Wisdom is experience and failing. You can't buy wisdom at all. I want to repeat that again. What wisdom is, is experience and failing. You figure out through the feedback loop, right? There's also that saying from Charlie Munger. Um, a smart man learns mistakes from himself. A wise man learns mistakes from others. So study what other people do. Study their behavior. Study their patterns and see see how what, see what they did to get to where they are. It's not about copying them uh, verbatim, but it's about getting uh, inspiration from them. It's about seeing insights. Of, hey, I never thought of it that way. Oh, shit. Now, I've been doing sales my whole life in this company. I never realized maybe I can start my own sales business on the side. Oh, shit. This commission stuff, this affiliate stuff. Oh, I never knew there's that much money. Oh, wait a second. I've been using this great e-commerce product. I know for a fact that I can make a better product or I can white label it better and I can sell it through this niche. Like, they haven't seen this niche. There's so many fucking rocks that you can unturn and see massive opportunities everywhere, but you have to start doing it. You have to start doing it right now, today. Time is the most important commodity, <laughs> resource on the fucking planet. But yet we waste it. We waste time. We, 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 it's like, it's not fucking renewable, but we're wasting it. You wake up and you do the same goddamn thing again and you read a million fucking books about how to do this, how to do that, blah, 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 blah. Nothing gets fucking done because it's it's paralysis by fucking analysis and you think that you have a limited time. Next thing you know, maybe you have a fucking got, you know, knock on wood, some kind of disease or cancer or you get hit by a car or who the fuck knows or even fucking worse, even worse than all that. You blink and you're fucking 55 and you've done nothing in your life. You're like, fuck. You're like, fuck, fuck, fuck. And like, God damn it, man.
Where has my life gone? And I know a lot of people like this. That's the norm. <laughs> That's not the exception to the rule. That's the goddamn motherfucking norm. You don't want to be that. And I'm not saying if you are in that situation, it's it's too it's never too late, man. I think Colonel Sanders was like late 60s or 70s before he made it. Walmart guy was old too, Sam Walton. Uh, so it's never too late. Never too late to do anything. You just got to fucking do it, man. Don't let time pass you by, man. Figure this shit out. Start experimenting today. Start going out there and figuring out where you can get multiple streams of cash flow. And then once you have that, once you have the cash flow, then we can revisit the question of investing. And you'll find it. 99% of the time, it's actually better to reinvest into the cash flow opportunities that you made than you to take a small allocation, maybe into very, very high risk stuff like uh, like angel investing, where you do have a thousand X upside, like maybe like an early IPO company, uh, etc. Or maybe you play it safe for your kids and you put it into like a, a tax free savings account, something locked to 5% for the next 30 years, right? So that's kind of like their whatever fund for them, uh, or Bitcoin, as I mentioned, whatever. But it gives you the option, it gives you the opportunity of getting liquid dry powder on a quarterly basis to reinvest in opportunities that you would never have before. And that's it, guys. Bottom line, go out there, start doing stuff, and don't let time pass you by. Peace out.